Dysentery might have been the culprit behind countless digital deaths during Oregon Trail Day and computer class, but it wasn't the only icky gastrointestinal affliction to lead settlers to an early grave. The Oregon Trail sure was a swell old time, wasn't it? Caravans of hardy pioneers trundling their way westward in wooden wheeled wagons across a vast expanse of shrubs, sedge, and sand. Check. A 2,000 mile long stretch of nothing but land, freedom, and the freedom to roll over that land. Check. Bad weather, bad food, an absolute lack of clean water, the most bare bones hygiene, and raging, unforgiving rapids. Check. Ooh, someone's drowning. In fun. Onslaughts of typhoid, fever, tuberculosis, measles, mumps, dysentery, and other diseases. Check. Okay, maybe it wasn't so great, especially with the one killer above all others, cholera. Cholera is the kind of disease that will make you glad to be alive now and not, say, in a wagon on the Oregon Trail from 1841 to 1869. According to Legends of America, about 350,000 people set out into the American West, and they ended up dying at a rate of about 10 to 15 per mile. Total deaths are estimated from 20,000 to 30,000. Those who didn't die from anything we already mentioned might have died from a stampede of lives stock, an accidentally discharged firearm, or collapsed from exhaustion and gotten run over by wagon wheels, or hungry animals, diseases, major and minor injuries. The cholera? Well, it's bad. It starts with vomiting and moves into dehydration, cramps, hypervolemic shock when the body can't pump blood, and if you make it through that, a one liter per hour diarrhea deluge. As Mayo Clinic very grotesquely describes, the diarrhea is, you know what? Just look it up yourself, it's that bad. Cholera is a horrific disease that gets contracted from contaminated water. And when we say contaminated, please forego any notions you have of icky non-filtered tap water that leaves a bit of lime deposit on the rim of the tap. Contaminated in this case means that it has bacteria in it from poop. Remember what we've said about no clean water and bad sanitation on the Oregon Trail? Here's how it might have gone. Person A poops in some water, and then person B ingests some of that water. That's it in a nutshell. And if loads of people everywhere have cholera and are stricken with diarrhea, it's really going to increase the chances of drinking poop water. As Literary Central explains, folks on the trail used whatever water they could find, like that in streams, ponds, rivers, and so forth. There was no guarantee of coming across any water sources while wandering through a vast expanse of unknown grasslands and deserts, so desperate settlers had to make do with whatever they found. Settlers unwittingly made the situation worse by digging holes to relieve themselves, and then having rain, no pun intended, flush waste material into water used for drinking. Folks then drank that water or used it for cooking. Plus, there wasn't a lot of hand washing with antibacterial soap going on or other modern disease prevention methods. Even though we're focusing mostly on diarrhea because it's the most severe indicator of cholera, cholera takes victims through a whole torrent of terrible symptoms. When symptoms do appear, sometimes between 7 to 14 days after ingesting the bacteria, vomiting comes first and persists for hours. This dehydrates a person, which carries its own set of symptoms, like fatigue, shriveled skin, emotional volatility, low blood pressure, shock, cramps, etc. Diarrhea comes last and can cause death within hours. The good news is that cholera can't be spread from person to person, except for the whole poop thing. The other good news is that cholera is easy to treat nowadays, although that fact comes with the bad news that yes, it is still around. Treating it these days takes a simple IV drip, provided you live in that kind of place where such things are readily accessible. 